Maybe let's start with, um, I know if you've lost this before, um, whether people have any reason now to be worried. It seems it's spreading um, faster than we thought. Yeah, so I think, um, you know, over the last uh, days, we have seen increased number, numbers of cases. We now have 13 uh, confirmed cases uh, in South Africa. What's important for people to recognize is that these are all cases in travelers to South Africa from countries where there is a widespread community transmission. And, and this really shows that our surveillance is working and we're picking these cases up. And now all these cases have been, been isolated um, and their contacts are being followed up. We are monitoring uh, to, to identify any possibility of, of community transmission, so uh, apart from these cases, and there's no suggestion at this time that there is widespread transmission of this virus in the community. So, so really people who, who have not been in contact with these cases you know, don't need to worry about a risk at this time of coronavirus infection. Maybe we can move quickly to the testing process. Many people want to know um, whether they can just knock at a doctor's door and ask for a test. We've reported on a, one, on a test being 1,200 rand or something of the sort in the private sector. How does that work? Who can get a test? Yeah, so, so um, there, there are a number of people offering testing at this time. So, so our laboratory at the National Institute for Communicable Diseases is offering testing and has been offering testing right uh, since the beginning of the outbreak. And this testing is, is clearly free of charge uh, for people who meet our, our case definition. More recently, um, the, some private laboratories have come on board and more are coming on board with testing um, over time. Time, as well as other laboratories within the National Health Laboratory Service. So other public sec sector laboratories are also coming on board. And we're all working together to provide laboratory diagnostics for this outbreak as an integrated team. Um, and what this means is that there are criteria that you need to meet in order to have the test. And th these are what we call uh, being a person under investigation. So in particular, first, you need to be sick. So you need to have some signs and symptoms of respiratory illness like fever or cough or shortness of breath. We're not testing healthy people. But in addition to being sick, you need to have one of our other specific criteria that would mean that we consider you could be at risk of having the infection. And this is perhaps being a contact of a confirmed case or being a healthcare worker in a hospital where there are confirmed cases, or probably the most likely for most of, of the listeners, which is um, if you've traveled from one of the countries where there is coronavirus transmission. Um, and then we have a very large criterion, which is a person admitted to hospital with severe pneumonia, where the doctors are worried uh, that, that they don't know what the diagnosis is. And in this case, you don't have to have traveled. And, and this last criterion is really just to make sure that we're extra sensitive and we don't miss any cases. So if you meet any of those criteria, you can have the test. And, and if you have health insurance, you can do it through the private sector. But if you, if you can't afford to pay, it's totally free of charge through the National Health uh, Laboratory Service. Now, the reason why we, we are not just offering testing to, to everybody, um, and that's because, you know, really at this time, people in the general public in South Africa are not at risk of this infection. And what we've seen in, in past outbreaks, um, understandably, there's really a high level of, of public anxiety about this infection. And so what can happen and what has happened in the past is that the laboratory services can get overwhelmed with what we call the worried well. So every person who has a runny nose or a cough, even if they haven't traveled and they're not at risk, is then rushing to the the laboratory um, and getting tested and then the laboratories get overwhelmed testing all these people who aren't at risk and maybe aren't able to get to testing the people who, who are at risk and that's why we're really controlling um, the testing um, but, but just to say also we are constantly updating the definitions for testing according to the situation both the international situation in terms of countries which pose a risk and also the local situation and so, so as the situation change, changes we change our criteria and they can change as often as every few days so, so listeners should really check our website for the latest uh, criteria. As far as I understand Cheryl, um, I'd read on a website that said uh, you have to have all three of the major symptoms for you to be tested. No, so. that's not correct. So it's any, any acute respiratory illness with symptoms including fever or cough or shortness of breath. So, so again, um, this is a balance of what we call sensitivity and specificity. We want to uh, you know, open the net wider so that we don't miss a case. And so you do obviously need to be ill with a respiratory illness, but you don't have to have all of those criteria. If you have any of those criteria and you've traveled or meet any of our other criteria, then, then you should 
be tested and your healthcare provider can call our hotline for doctors to, to get advice if they're not clear if you do meet the criteria or not. Finally, so I can let you go, can you just give us some um, clarity on the mask issue? We've heard quite a few people saying masks do not work, but also we've seen uh, healthcare professionals wear masks. So do they work or do, don't they? Yeah, so absolutely a great question and so much uh, confusion out there. I think for the general public who are trying to protect themselves from coronavirus, there is no uh, recommendation for masks. And the reason is that there's no evidence that wearing a standard surgical mask actually reduces your risk of catching a respiratory infection. And there is uh, data that suggests that in fact, if you're not used to wearing a mask and you have a mask, you constantly will be touching your face and playing with the mask. And that could actually theoretically increase the risk because your, your hands are, remember your, the way the virus gets to you is through your hands, which touch contaminated surfaces. And then you bring them up to your face and introduce them into your nose and mouth. So, so surgical masks to protect yourself are really not recommended. There are instances in which masks should be used, and, and these are two. The one is if you're actually sick and you're coughing and sneezing and, and you potentially have coronavirus infection, then there is evidence that wearing a surgical mask can reduce the spread from you to other people. And the reason for this is that the mask just physically catches some of those droplets that you're coughing and sneezing out, and so it reduces the, the spread. So it doesn't totally prevent the spread, but amongst other things like hand washing, like cough and sneeze hygiene, a mask is one of the things that can help to reduce the spread from a sick person. Now, you, you mentioned that there's a, when we talk about healthcare workers, now that's a very different uh, situation. And, and there's a very specific type of mask um, that, that healthcare workers uh, are recommended to use in the specific situation where they do what is called aerosol generating procedures. So this would be taking the sample from the throat and nose of the patient or other procedures that might release the respiratory secretions of the patient. When you do these kinds of procedures, you can release small droplets into the air that could be uh, infectious. And so healthcare workers are recommended to wear what we call an N95 mask, which is a special mask, not just the surgical mask you buy off the shelf, that, that is designed to, to catch even the small particles and protect healthcare workers. So healthcare workers absolutely, um, you know, they, in certain circumstances, there, there are recommendations that they should wear masks. But for the general public, the only circumstance is if you, if you are sick, wearing a surgical mask can reduce your risk of spreading to others. For more, go to ewn.co.za.